We are in the green room this morning because sofas are not allowed on the furniture in the studio. Or dogs aren't. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah. Schmatless is with us. Uh, we call him Schmatless. His name is Atlas. And Nathan Lowe, the indie dog whisperer, mm -hmm. is here. Uh, and uh, I want to show you some video okay. uh, of, of perhaps us doing things with Atlas in the communication way okay. that is incorrect. Yes. Take a look. Let's take a look. Okay, here are the boys. I just got home from work, uh, and they're very excited about the fact that I've arrived. Uh, now, Schmatless, I'm going to... I want to show you what happens when you talk to Schmatless in an excited voice. Hey, Schmatless? Atlas, hey! Hey, do you want dinners? Do you want suppers? Do you want suppers? Do you want suppers? Do you want suppers? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. This is this is always cause for excitement when uh, when we get him his food when I get home from work. Look at that little, at that little tail going. Let's show everybody what happens when I talk to you in an excited voice and I'm and I'm very excited. What do you do? Well, you stay pretty calm. Ah, what's going on? What's going on? I don't know. Wow. Okay, that's it. Mommy does a better excited voice. <laughs> Difference in yes. Kathy's tone of voice yes. and my tone of voice. That's right, and you notice how when she said, by the way, immediate jumping up, which is dominant signaling, and that's yeah. why I wanted to talk about today what I would call watch your language. Uh -huh. So dogs primarily speak a nonverbal body language, ears, eyes, tail, stance, right? They, they don't talk to each other. And mm -hmm. people don't think about it. People try to communicate to their dogs, say, hi, buddy, I'm so glad to see you, not knowing that's not how dogs communicate with each other. When dogs growl and things like that, people say, well, dogs growl, isn't that them talking? That indicates intensity level, but that's not the communication. What they're doing with their body is the communication. So I always tell people, I was just in a home yesterday, they couldn't get their terrier to settle down. But you know what they're always doing? Okay, buddy, we're gonna. Grandma's gonna do, hold on. Wait, you're gonna eat in a minute. Okay, uh -huh. and the dog's just like this all the time, jumping on them. Yeah. If you limit verbal conversations with your dog, they calm down. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely the case, and I had them do that. So when you limit verbal conversation and just disconnect, what you'll find is it will reduce excitement. It'll reduce tension for them too, because when you look at a dog and say, "Hey, buddy," it indicates a situation. They start doing this. Right. Like, what's, what's about to happen? That's a form of tension for a dog. People mm -hmm. don't realize that. That's not good for them to live like that all the time. It allows your dog to relax when you disconnect verbally. So guidelines for verbal communication, I'm not saying don't ever talk to your dog. I had one lady I was talking to, and she said, but can I ever talk to him? I said, yeah, I'm not saying you can't ever talk to your dog, but how you talk to them matters. So for instance, when Kathy talked to him, uh -huh. did you notice because of her pitch, the high pitch, he jumped on her. Yeah. Jumping is a dominant signal. Yeah. He's actually printing her with his scent because she made a submissive sound. Oh. That's actually what he's doing in his mind. Okay. She thinks it's maybe lovey-dovey, but for him, he just, yep, submissive signal, dominant signal. How you doing? Now let me go eat. Uh -huh. That's basically what happened. So when I tell people to speak to their dog, I say, if you're going to talk to them, talk to them like you'd want your masseuse to talk to you when you're being worked on. Just calm, calm, peaceful. If your masseuse was working on you and said, how'd your week go? Yeah, my, my cousin. But you'd say, dude, I'm trying to, trying to chill here. So keep also, this is something else that people don't realize, George, is that keep your eyes relaxed. When you go like this and bug your eyes out at a dog, they widen their eyes in order to indicate something is going on. Right? Mm -hmm. Hey, are we getting, and they're like, what is about to happen? Keep your eyes calm, keep your voice calm, and disconnect if your dog gets excited. If your dog gets excited and is crashing your space like what Kathy would have done, and she did. She nudged him down said, ah, yeah. and he immediately went back. And I imagine that all of these things you're talking about, consistency is paramount. Yes, because you can confuse them. Mm -hmm. Because if say that you're excited one day and not the next, so sometimes you're allowing dominant signaling because you're vocalizing, and other times, rah, rah, rah. Uh -huh. Be consistent about it. Don't ever let them dominant signal. It's not that you can't ever talk to them. But if you do talk like that to them, <laughs> but she did a great job, George. And I, in fact, when I watched the, the video earlier, yeah. she immediately said, "Get down!" Instead yeah. of saying, "Okay, buddy, okay, okay, well, okay, I'll let yeah. me love you," she cut the process. That's exactly. In fact, she was like, 
the ideal pupil showing what this should look like. All so right. good job, Kathy. We <laughs> only have one alpha dog in the house, right, Atlas? And that's Mommy. I was going to say, I know that's Kathy. So. I can't be. Uh, I'll tell you something, though, Amber. This dog was loving him some Randy Alice earlier. Just oh, curled up yeah. next to him during the meeting. Similar personalities, I'd yeah. say. <laughs> He's so sweet.